All right, so here we are just about to go into uh, into round one. We are against Mr. Fridays, despite today being a Thursday. He wins the roll, and this is our opening hand. Uh, five land with a free box on Warhammer. On the draw, I think I can keep this. We have all we have our colors, and then we also, you know, we have a game plan. We have a very distinct game plan, and hopefully, we'll just draw some spells. So I think I think I don't know. It might be a loose keep, but I I think we can get there with this. Uh, you know, the uh, the hammer will hopefully uh, mitigate any uh, life lost caused to us from the uh, from the both the Afrit and our muse. What is he casting at end of turn? Like a peak or something? Brainstorm. Ah. This guy most likely has not read Mr. AJ Soccer's article about when to brainstorm. As brainstorming on turn one is actually one of the worst plays you can make because you're 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 drawing three cards, putting two cards back, you're drawing one of them, and especially on turn one, you like you do you really know what you want? Like maybe if he's mana screwed and he's really digging for land, that then I can understand it. But um but otherwise, I'm uh, you know, I, I I'm pretty sure I disagree with that play, unless there's a very specific reason. And that um, so yeah, we just play the land. Uh, next turn, gonna be running out the Afrit. Then uh, could play Hammer. Uh, we're both blue black, so odds are he has some removal here. So I would probably run out the Graveborn Muse. Okay, he's researching, which is fine. And discard into swamp. All right, we'll play our play our flyer. See if he has removal for it. I'm probably gonna just play the play the muse next turn. Um, Warren Powers known. Okay, he is ramping. Lunas Prowler, uh, so he's going to have like 7 mana potentially next turn, so I would really like to forbid. So I think I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to leave forbid mana open, um, counter his play, untap, play the Graveborn Muse, hopefully get a 6 land so I can go hammer, equip, swing in one turn. And so that way I don't lose multiple turns of play because of my, uh, of that. Uh, Chainer's Edict. I'm going to... Yeah, I'll forbid it. Um, because next turn I can play Hammer Prowler and then sack the Prowler. Or I can I can sack either one, actually. Well, cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, uh, yeah, actually, that counter may have been a little loose. Because if I'm going to play Prowler... yeah. Oh, Ether Adept. Okay. All right, you have tempo. Ah, uh, so do I want to go Prowler Efreet? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he can flash back the, flash back the edict. Flash back for seven. So that, in essence, will tap him out more or less, unless he has a land. So. If he does that, I'm sacking the Prowler because this can block the Ether Dept. Uh, yeah. And especially once I get a hammer out, I don't want him to be able to weaken my guy. Confiscate. That's a pretty sick card. Alright, in that case, I will be uh, casting Steel Hellkite. Obviously, I take it because if I block, he can just pitch a card and then uh, get a ton of value. Confiscate, eh? Uh, yeah, we'll just hell kite it up. So we can, uh, the play next turn is if everything goes according to plan, we attack him. Uh, he, he's going to block, but if he didn't block, then we would ha we would be able to pay six and blow up the power stone. 
or pay three and or sorry pay th six and blow up the confiscate or we can pay three and blow up the power stone and the adapt but uh We still have to remember he's got this chainer's uh, chainer's edict in his graveyard that he can flash back. But right now, like pretty much all all we want is him not to be able to kill our steel hellkite because that's uh, hopefully going to win us the game here. Let's see what does he have here. He has into the royal. That's pretty sick. All right. And he shall draw a card indeed. Him to Turok. Oh, man. So he just... Oh, and he hit our hammer? Man, that was, uh, that was pretty sick. All right. So we are looking... Uh, we're definitely on the back foot here. Oh, and he still has that crazy, uh, the edict. Oh, man, we are, uh, this is not looking good for us. So, we play that. We play the Muse. So, uh, exiles any card. Okay, so. Now, I think what we're going to have to do is if he edicts us. I don't know. Like, the play we can go for is, if he edicts us, he sacks, uh, you know, we we can sack the Muse, block the Afrit, let the damage go through, and then if three points of damage go through, then uh, we disfigure it. However, that means we have no board to his, uh, his guys. So, I think that's what I'm going to go for here. He's, I'm probably playing right into his hands by blocking in this manner. But, like, I don't know. We have Disfigure, so I don't know why he would attack with the Adept here into the, uh, into the Muse. Maybe he thought the Edict was, like, instant speed or something? Oh, awesome. So we just got a bunch of value. Well, not a bunch, but we got more value than we should have. And he did not, uh... Discard the card to weaken our weaken our prowler, which is good. Oh, this is a lot of mana. Oh yeah, it's probably the flashback on the uh the edict. Necromancy. So that's like an anime dead. Okay. Targeting my steel hellkite. That is pretty disgusting. And turn we shall destroy the Efreet. Well, at least we get to draw two cards this turn. So that's a uh, silver lining on all this. Murderous red cap is uh, is not exactly what I wanted to see here. I'm gonna, but I guess we're gonna we're gonna play it out. Kill the uh, the old grave robber. It's not a zombie, is it? No. Okay. Oh, oh man, I just realized that. that well, I don't know. He was going to. He was probably going to. Uh, to steal Hulk for four anyway. But now, not only does he get get our muse, but he gets the uh, gets the red cap as well, which kind of sucks. I uh, I'm gonna be quite frank. I don't see us coming back from this game. However, yeah, we'd have to rip like Vendetta, and even if we rip Vendetta. Are, can Vendetta even target artifact creatures? I'm not sure. We have to rip an out to this uh, this Hellkite. And then, uh... I'll just have six. And, um... And even then, then we have to, you know, mount some sort of offense. Like, if we go out to Steel Hellkite Grave Titan, we're probably alright. Oh yeah, and he's pumping it, so... Uh, that card's pretty sick. 
Uh, so between the uh, necromancy and the uh, the contr or the uh, confiscate, I don't know if we have some enchantment removal or something like that, but that would uh, definitely be something that we could uh, consider bringing in. And yay, we get to shoot him for one. That is not an out, and we will go to game two. All right, so. Uh, do you have any outs to... Oh, I didn't play the factory. Uh, yeah. um. I guess this is... Uh, I guess, sorry. Oops, where did I put that? The uh, Phyrexian Reclamation. Like, that's kind of an out to Necromancy in that whatever he targets of the Necromancy, he can just respond and bring it back. It's all right. I guess I can. Capsize is also really good against him. Um, and so is Rift and Clotskate. Okay. So if I bring this in and then I can board out, like. Ah, oh, even Crystal Shard. Okay, we do have a lot of bounce to deal with his enchantments, so that's good. Um, board out this red cap, I think. So yeah, I was probably not going to do a ton against him. And, uh, do I want the factory? Uh, kind of. Oh, uh, no, we have a ton of double blue. Oh, no. I'll leave the factory out for now. Alright, yes, we will play first. Uh, this hand's alright. We don't have a creature, but we do have that shard, which is, uh, which is pretty, pretty good. So, play that out. Um, okay, so that makes his, uh, at least it makes us confiscate pretty bad. Although confiscate can take any permanent, right? So he could just take the shard itself. But if he confiscates and then we play the crystal shard afterwards, then it's, it's, it's really good. He mulligan to six and he's debating going to five. Okay. So the fact that he tanked for a little bit there tells me that he was, you know, yep, that his hand might be sketchy. I think I'm going to play Hammer here, just first. Um, oh, he's going to Brainstorm again. Ah, man. If I lose to a guy who went both games, turn on Brainstorm, it will be, uh... I'll be kind of scarred. Um. <sighs> Alright. So. Let's go play the Hammer. Oh man, hims me again. Oh, it hits my mind control. Well, and a land, but oh man, this guy is just running pretty good. Well, that's okay. We can run good too. If so, I'm gonna suit up Finkel with a hammer and uh, hopefully go to town on him. And Finkel's a black creature, so stuff like Doomblade and Terror will not kill him. Although we have seen Into the Royal, which could like take us off some tempo. And obviously, this, our opponent will have black creatures. But it looks like. Uh... Ooh, counterspell. I think I'm just going to attack here and leave up counterspell. Well, draw my card and leave up counterspell mana. So Because I just want to draw a bunch of cards and get the uh, value that he got off, off him to track, get that value back. Yes, I would love to draw a card. Okay. And I'll just pass the turn. Six mana for him. And he still has no play, so maybe he kept a very land light hand. Uh now I'll uh I'll happily equip the uh equip Finkel and it counter anything he plays in response. He only has a single blue, so like yeah, him having a counter spell is not the most likely scenario. But he very well could have removal. And if he has, like, Into the Royal or something, I will most likely counter it. Repulse. I will counterspell that. Mm. 
Then gain a bunch of life, draw a bunch of cards. All right, that's that's what I'm talking about. Love this guy. I absolutely love it. Uh, random, random trivia fact about uh, Shadow Mage of Uh Not this year, but uh, well, not 2011, not 2010, but 2009. We, uh, my local gaming store, we had a, we always have a Halloween tournament, which involves dressing up as uh, as magic characters. And so we, one year we had uh, EDH, except your general could be any non could be non legendary. And if you dressed up as them, and it was convincing enough, you got to start with them and play. And it was a giant group game. And so I dressed up as uh, as Mr. Shadow Mage Infiltrator here. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty great. We had one guy who uh, tried and failed to dress up as Progenitus, and we let him have it for pity's sake. And so he started off with throwing Progenitus, and I cast an edict on him. And he was very sad. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Uh, you can actually look it up on the, uh, the Wizards website, uh, like, form of the form of the general i think it was called anyway we did a similar thing this year but i didn't dress up because i didn't have time to but you know that's my story of shadow mage infiltrator because love drawing cards also really good when he wears a hammer instead of that that wussy staff i was like when i was making my costume i was like oh man why why do i have to wear this why do i have to make this staff like you know, i'd much rather have just like a giant giant hammer but i guess that's the nature of being a mage all right uh our opponent's compulsive researching. He discards. Ooh, discards Ether Adept and into the Royal. Interesting. So he probably has an out to the uh, the infiltrator if he discarded, you know, two semi outs for it. Does he have the edict? Oh, he has necromancy to bring back. I don't know what to, uh, bring back. Ether Adept. Ah, okay, gotcha. So he'll bounce my. Oh, I guess he just had a really awkward discard, and so he'd rather discard it and then play Necromancy to sort of save a little bit of value. Although, like, why wouldn't you just. Wait, hold on, let me read the full text of this. All right, yeah. Okay, you may cast Necromancy as though it had a flash. Okay. Okay, so why wouldn't he just pitch Necromancy and the into the royal and then just play the ether deck because now if i have any way to uh destroy the enchantment then uh huh, then you know like the ether deck dies whereby those cards wouldn't be live if uh you know otherwise so i'll just uh play finkel again you know block currently it blocks what he has very nicely If he has confiscate here, it could be kind of awkward. Um, it would actually be really awkward because I don't have an out to it. I don't have crystal shard in play quite yet. Oh, I really hope that's not what he has, and I can't vendetta my own guy in response. Here, I'll just. Oh, he has Concentrate. Not quite uh, Confiscate, and uh, it's a lot less deadly to me. Plays a Swamp. Does he have an Edict? I don't know. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be playing the Hammer here. Or, I'm not going to be equipping the Hammer, sorry. I'm just going to be playing Crystal Shard and, uh, or beating in and then playing Crystal Shard. Or, uh, actually, play Crystal Shard first. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say go. Uh, I don't really care about the two damage I'm taking here, and uh, this way, if he has confiscate, he can't confiscate my infiltrator, and uh, he'll probably confiscate the hammer. But 
but that's I can deal with that a lot easier because I can vendetta his target and get some some tempo. Uh, too bad I can't wheelbender to change the equip trigger to something else that be, or to, to one of my guys if he confiscates it, but that's all right. Obviously, I'm not going to vendetta here. I would much rather save that for some threat, some uh, some more you know, important threat. Mall Drifter. Man, that card's good. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, my computer ran out of space. Uh, or, well, not my computer, but the Windows partition on my MacBook ran out of space for the recording, so I had to go delete a bunch of old movies and stuff like that. Uh, all right, we drew Moroi, who's a good man. I'll be attacking here. Really, I would just like to draw lands. Oh, there's that Frickson Reclamation. We can get back. It's only creatures, right? Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to morph this Wellbender just because I love having a Wellbender down. And, you know, eventually I'll be gaining some more life so that, uh, with the hammer. So, me losing this, uh, you know, this Wellbender is. Not the worst of thing. And especially it means that his confiscate draws are now extremely dead because I can just make him confiscate uh, like hit, like a land or something like that. Or uh, not even a land. I'll, like like the ether adapter or something such that if I can kill the ether adapt, then his uh, then his confiscate will die. Because if, if I confiscate, make him confiscate like a land, he might draw like an inter Oh, he's used into the row, but he might draw some other bounce spell. Which could, you know, make that attack slightly... Slightly bad. I actually probably could have played the Frickson Reclamation here. And still enough because I'm probably not going to be using both the Shard and the Willbender. But you never know. Barter in Blood. Alright. Uh, I will. Blue. To, uh, which do I want to target? Now... I don't, yeah. Um. I'm going to take the Wheelbender just because of the surprise fact, whereby I can rebuy the, uh, I can rebuy the, the Infiltrator with my uh, Frixion Reclamation, should I want to get that up and going. Although I probably will just be playing things. Yeah. Yeah, Necromancy died. It's actually a really good anime dead variant. I, I think I've seen the card, but I've never interacted with it. I don't have it in my cube or anything like that. Alright, so we play Guy Face Down. This is the, uh, the control battle to end all control battles, such that... All right, my opponent's just asking for a second, and I shall grant it to him. All right, so our opponent is back. He has excluded our wheelbender, which unfortunately will go through, and we will. Um, we'll cast Ifrit here because uh, that way next turn we have we have a play what with the equip, and we can. Still, we can bounce it with the uh, Crystal Shard. Should he have Confiscate? Man, he's played a lot of spells this game. But I guess some of those have been discarded to the likes of Compulsive Research. And he has drawn a fair few. Alright. Upkeep. I will always yield to the one damage. Let's hammer up our guy. Oh, 
Okay, and he gets in. Um, might as well play the Rebirth. Or the Reclamation, sorry. Um, you know, we're sitting really good here. He doesn't have a removal spell in his hand, obviously, or would have played it. Um, or at least a removal spell that can deal with this are freed. Um, you know, we're sitting at a comfortable life total. He's drawn a ton of lands, to be fair, but also a ton of spells. And we're just going to get Muldrifter, or not Muldrifter, we're going to get Willbender back at the end of turn, so that, just to make his draws more awkward, so that if he does draw removal spells and whatnot, he can't hit our Ifrit, or whatever. Oh, looks like uh, we're one of the last games going, because everyone else in this draft has now started watching, watching our epic, epic control versus control matchup. While my opponent thinks, I will... Oh, and he concedes, because that is not a favorable board state to come back from. Uh, could bring in memory lapse here, but I'm not sure how good that would be, or if it would if it would be actually better than anything else. Like, I think the Wheelbender jig is actually up, just because, you know, he's seen it. But at the same time, it's such a powerful effect in that it makes anything your opponent does a lot more favorable for, for you and... So I think I'll I think I'll keep the keep the well bender in. Oh, that might be wrong. I don't know. Ready for game three. He is on the play, I assume. Yes, and we have a pretty sick hand. We are, we have a turn two guild mage followed up with a double counter magic and hopefully just drawing into Grave Titan. He mulliganed on the play, which is always what you want in the control matchup. So we'll be kind of like man. He's had that island first turn every game. Maybe he just has a bunch of those islands. Good, that's, you know, I'm happy to draw lands here. Oh man, he's turn one brainstormed every game. Yeah. And if you learn one thing from this draft video is that I'm telling you not to brainstorm on turn one. Alright, we're just we're drawing a bunch of land. This is, uh, step one is complete. Step two is to now draw spells. <laughs> so, yeah. Ether Adept. All right, that is fine. Lay it back out. Oh wait, this is this is capsized. I actually thought it was forbid initially. Okay, so we do have a counter spell, not multiples. Okay, yeah, capsize is good. You know. I haven't seen a, I don't think I've seen a counter spell out of him. I've just seen a bunch of bounce. That is fine. If he had uh ninja it in like an Okiba Gang Shinobi or something, that would have been uh very unfortunate. Okay, he gets the uh the horse horsemanship, thieving magpie. Um could capsize it here. Uh, I think I'm gonna actually just have to let it hit me and then I'll trade with the adept here I think probably should have traded last turn but I don't know him having that slightly changes my line of play just because I can't get through now with the guild mage right I could capsize at main phase but I'm gonna have to let him get some value here Pulse of research. Yeah, that's fine. I'd rather counter something relevant, and especially I don't have a play next turn unless I draw something. So I would rather counter, you know, some business. Oh man, that's pretty sick. Get my wheelbender, wheelbender face down. There's so few morph cards in the cube, or at least usually I only saw a few 
that, and I'm pretty sure this isn't blistering Firecat or anything, that he probably knows it is this. The only one it could possibly be, the only other two that it would it, it likely might be are uh, Void Mage Prodigy, that's the uh, like sacrifice a wizard, counter target spell, and it's a wizard, or Void Mage Apprentice, which is just it flips over for four and counters a spell. So unfortunately, I have to let him get value. Honestly, all I'm hoping here for is that he uh, he plays like he taps out and casts a Mall Drifter. I counter it, and then I play Great on tap and play Grave Titan. That's like, or if he plays a uh, Concentrate, and then I can Will Vendor to make myself draw three cards. That'd be pretty good too. Oh, I called the Mall Drifter. Not I am going to counter that. And uh, things looking good for. Uh, for Grave Titan here, hopefully. And the thing is, is like you know, I haven't seen any hard removal out of him. So if he has bounce or whatnot, like bounce is pretty much his only out because I will have lots of zombies too if he has the edict. Although if he has, uh, if he has, um, what is it? Confiscate. That could be awkward, but I do have the cap size with buyback mana. So I can just capsize the uh, capsize the Grave Titan. He is like got a one sided howling line going on here with this Lu Jun, but uh, you know, I do have the uh, the Grave Titan. So if he doesn't have Confiscate, I don't know what his other outs could be to this card are. Because even if he gets rid of the Grave Titan somehow. I am presenting a three-turn clock with my, my six power worth of guys. Yep, okay, and that's exactly what we thought. Obviously, we didn't have Wheelbender mana up there, but, you know... We actually could hit the confiscate and then yeah I actually like hitting the confiscate here because he can either tap out for confiscate again and be down a bunch of life or he can play something different and then we have a grave titan that's not summoning sick so I'm actually going to hit the confiscate here And we're going to get in some beats. So let's see, what are his good, like, I don't know. This, is, this board state, he's really not favored here because he has so few outs to the Grave Titan. And, uh, you know, now he knows that he can... The confiscate is in effect worthless, and especially next turn we will have will better up so that when he does confiscate, we can switch it. We can, uh, yeah, having played a, a fair bit of popper, uh, you know, I know the power of cap size late game that is not countered. So, and of course, you know, you don't you don't see grave titan and popper that much, but you know, it's good. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing some popper videos, hopefully relatively soon, because uh, it, it's starting to be the uh, a big up-and-coming format. There's two formats that are really new, up-and-coming. Uh, a lot of people are playing popper. Even uh, LSV has been playing popper, and uh, so has Trick Jarrett of Mana Nation, and a few other people have been playing uh, playing some popper, which I think is great. And uh, I think Kelly Reed from Quiet Speculation also has been playing popper. And the other format is this this one called Mojo Stow, where it's you have the I uh, know. All I know is that it's 60 basic lands, and it involves the Momir Vig, uh, Joyra, and Stone Hero Giant avatars, which all let you put do ran get random things. Joyra lets you get three random instants. Okay, he caps, uh, he repulses. That is fine. Um, Joyra lets you cast like random instants. Um, Momir, Momir Vig lets you get random creatures, and Stone Hero Giant. Oh no way! That's totally sick. Oh, but he gets the worst too. Worst him to Turok ever. Um, actually, that was pretty good. So, we are, uh, we are very lucky. And he's probably raging right now. And, frankly, I, I, I don't blame him. Um, obviously going to attack here.
Yeah, I'm just going to tighten it up again. And then, well, you know, we'll do the same sort of line of play. Especially because now if he confiscates, he loses. Because we have the cap size, and then he can block one of our two power guys. And we still present, we're presenting 10 total power, assuming that he temporarily gets rid of the Grave Titan. So, although, if we win the game, it's because that him to Turok went uh, went pretty much exactly how we needed it to. Although, the cap size might not be use relevant, especially having drawn that crystal shard. Um, but, because it... Oh, no, yeah, it's probably still relevant. Well, no, because if he capsizes, taps out, we crystal shard, we bounce the titan because he's tapped out. So, I don't know. The, the whole the crucial thing though was was keeping grave titan although if he had like if he hadn't we would just we would be a lot slower and it would be he would be able to come back easier so anyway going back to what i was saying for that awesome him to turok for us uh mojo sto it's you get you get a bunch of random instance equipments and creatures and i think you get to choose like which one of the abilities you want to activate I'm, I'm not quite sure yet but apparently it's all their age and everyone's been playing it ff freak's been playing it um it's just the next, like, great... People have been calling it the next EDH. And uh, I'm all for formats that are like EDH because they're usually a ton of fun. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do this in real life very well because you obviously can't randomly determine magic cards, you know, just on the fly. So, you know, it, it'll be just like... Like, someone had a Mover Basic deck, I think, in real life whereby you had, like, pretty much every creature ever made, and then you would roll some combination of dice and get... And, you know, it was a big hassle, though, and you like you can't just pick up 60 lands and play more of basic like you can on Magic Online with a, with an avatar. So, yeah. But I uh, I look forward to trying that format out. So that and Popper, the two, two big casual formats trying to come up in Moto. And this is me filling, uh, filling dead air while our opponent is taking his time. He's, off, he's going to attack and see if he can draw an out, which is uh, probably the most reasonable line of play. We will not block it, as we do not have... As Grave Titan is not riding a horse. Uh, pretty cool if he was, you know, pulling like an Isaiah Mustafa, just Grave Titan sitting there chilling out in a horse. But unfortunately, he is not chilling out in a horse, and we have to let our opponent draw the card. But we uh, we are looking pretty good with this uh, whole horde of zombies going on here. Barter and blood, that is fine. I I'm pretty sure he has to have now, uh, like, a bounce spell. Or he dies. Just sex him. Sex him, zombies. Into the royal? Or has he already used that? No, he could into the royal. Yeah, okay. Alright, he will survive at a precarious to life. I don't even think I'm going to play Grave Titan. I'm just going to play Shard here. And then... Uh, actually, I'm not even going to play anything. Because this way I leave up Wheelbender and Capsize and Vendetta and potential to double Capsize or Capsize plus Shard next turn. So, like, you know, he has to he has to have another Wrath Effect. In which case, I bounce the, uh, the Wheelbender. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I'm just going to take the uh, the Crystal Shark. Capsize and it are doing the, in essence, the same thing. And So you have to have, like, two more guys, or a guy in a bounce spell. Or two removal spells, like, two bounce spells. If he has undo... His his out is currently undo, which uh, for you, those of you who don't know, it's like it bounces two per creatures. It's like a whiplash trap, but it costs three, and uh, it's really good in Mirage Visions Weatherlight Draft, which was uh, it was Nyx Pax Necromancy. It is fine uh, now. Whenever Necromancy leaves the battlefield, the, okay, awesome. So yeah, we win. Oh, he gets Ether Adept here. Yeah, we still win because he can bounce a token. Well, no, he can't even bounce a token because we will will bend it and make it hit the uh, uh, targeting ether deck. Yeah, we're gonna will bend, 
bend it and make it hit itself. And we win. All right, uh, great stuff. We will see you in the next round.